Well, it's the first morning here at the Cannes Yachting Festival and the first boat we're going to look at is this aluminium catamaran. It's called the Vandal Explorer. It's the first boat in their fleet. The co-founder is Ben Menham and he's got a heritage in the production of chase boats and super yacht tenders. He wanted to produce something basically for himself that he could use to really enjoy the Mediterranean. But he's mates with Espanonio, who's a, a famous designer of super yachts, a Norwegian designer, and he wanted something that he could use to enjoy the waters of Norway. So they collaborated, and the result is this. And we only lost about a knot throughout that entire time, actually. There are key differences here. Espen's boat is this one, this is number two. It's got a slightly elevated flybridge compared to the first boat. And it's got a more extended aft end here that operates as a passerelle, but also protects your outboard engines. But boat number one's the one we're gonna be taking out. So before the show gets underway, let's get on board and get going. So while we make our way out into the open water from the show, it's worth having a look around on this main deck and considering some of these uh, features that we have here. Now, firstly at the back end, although it's shorter that still does a pretty good job as a passerelle and you'll see we've got Samson posts there, proper Samson posts. There's kind of a commercial feel to this boat. What Ben actually calls industrial chic or perhaps somebody's said industrial chic to Ben and he kind of enjoys the idea but you absolutely feel that here and that's kind of been a, an Espanonio trademark on a couple of his designs in the past these big heavyweight bars everywhere you look very open slightly sort of skeletal feel to the back end of this boat and of course we've got those aluminium hulls we've also got aluminium top sides and the idea there of course is to make this boat strong but light to make it uh, ecologically responsible because of course aluminium is easily recyclable and actually a lot of the aluminium they've used on this boat is recycled it's 46 feet long and it's got a relatively generous beam uh, approaching well, between 14 and 15 feet and Ben openly admits that what he, he values here is kind of real estate for a 46 foot boat a flybridge cat with outboard engines gives you about as much real estate as you could hope to enjoy. In terms of seating and socialising facilities on this main deck aft, you can of course reverse that backrest, shift it aft so you've got three or four spaces for people to face forward. There's also a big teak table that you can fit in here and because we've got so much under deck storage on both sides, there's plenty of room for an additional four or six director's chairs so you can very feasibly seat eight to ten without blocking their way down the sides of the decks. And further forward, the galley's quite impressive too. Like absolutely everything else on this boat, it's beautifully built from heavyweight aluminium. Even this tray, when you lift that up it snaps very solidly into place on these big brackets and when you push down on it there's absolutely no flex at all. It gives you loads, loads of work area, much more than you'd expect on a boat of this kind of length. And because you've got this lip here, your food and your plates and your knives and so on won't slide around and fall on the deck when you're underway or sitting at anchor in a few swells. We also have the um, two-wing gas hob and a pretty deep sink with a home style tap that you can move around and use as you wish. We've got a really solid grab rail here. Plenty of storage. That's the gas locker over here on the starboard side incidentally. We've got storage boxes underneath here as well. And down below, rather than the fridge on this boat because we want to minimise 
um, power demands on the batteries. We've got a couple of cool boxes neatly set beneath these drawer units and they're in predictably industrial style kind of held in place by these beautiful and beautifully simplistic metal bars. We also have a powered cool box on the port side tucked away in that little recess to keep the walkway clear. And of course the fact that this is built from aluminium makes everything a little bit more custom friendly too because you don't have fixed mouldings that dictate what you can do and where. And this boat can easily be elongated, the bulwarks could be slightly raised. You could do away with this deck furniture here in the centre of the uh, aft deck or with that galley amidships. However you want to spec it, it can be pretty much done here. And actually, if we pop up to the flybridge, where the guys are relaxing, taking it easy, trying not to get in my way, you can see that the entire fly deck up here has been left pretty much open while Ben decides exactly what he wants to do with it. In the meantime, what he has done with it is install these little kind of lounge chairs. I've never seen quite such a, a casual or relaxed helming position in my life. It's absolutely lovely. Uh, they do need to integrate a little bit of uh, adjustability into that steering wheel because it sits a little high because you sit relatively low so that will drop down. But it's a lovely steering position and it enables that wind deflector to do a proper job of directing that wind up and over your head. While we're up here, another feature I'd like to just point out, because it's quite a cool one. Now Ben and the other guys involved in this project are generally sailors. Sailors are quite some repute, I'm told, but he won't tell me what his exploits are all about yet. Uh, so rather than hydraulics and push buttons, what we have back here to deploy your tender is lines and pulleys. We have a simple pin that you pull down, you connect the lines to your tender, you swing it out over the starboard side here. And it's very impressive the way they've integrated that into the after a frame there. That's a really neat touch. And actually, talking of the eco-credentials of this boat, there's a couple of other things to consider. And on the hull, or on the hulls I should say, there's a silicon coating rather than uh, toxic anti-foul paint. There are also, if we look up above us, where the tender is kept. That will go around the other side and climb up to take a closer look at that. There are solar panels set up here beneath the tender. Because, of course, you don't need the solar panels when you've got the engines running. When you come to anchor, though, you can crane your tender in, expose your solar panels, and use your solar panels to run your two domestic batteries. To help with that, of course, there's plenty of gas on this boat. We've got a gas cooker, uh, a gas hob, I should say, at the, uh, the midship's galley there. We've also got something I really do enjoy and something I've not really seen before is an incinerator toilet. So basically, you do your business down there and then it incinerates what you've done. The waste is popped into a tray and every couple of weeks you simply dispose of that uh, waste from your tray into a regular bin. What Ben was basically after was a boat that would enable him to make the two key transits in the Mediterranean for him, which is from Marseille to northeast Menorca and from Mahon in Menorca across to North Sardinia. And with twin 630 litre tanks, he reckons he's getting a cruising range of about 240 nautical miles out of these. which equates to about four litres per nautical mile, which is actually pretty impressive. Of course, one of the other features of these big 5.6 litre uh, V8s is the fact that they're able to spin big, big props. They've got tremendous torque, so they can push big boats, exactly like this, 40 foot plus cruisers. This is 46 foot, weighs around about 11 metric tonnes. And according to these guys, it'll achieve well in excess of 40 knots, around about 43 knots, in fact. But of course it's not just pushing a pair of aluminium holes. What it's pushing is aluminium holes that are augmented with uh, a foil. 
Now that foil runs between the holes about two thirds of the way aft. It's a fixed foil, so there's no need to worry about uh, moving parts. And the idea, apparently an idea that's been borne out in testing, is that those foils enable this boat to generate about 25 to 30 percent extra running efficiency um, over a non-foil cap of a similar uh, size, while also enabling a smoother ride and less spray, um, and according to these guys, enhanced high-speed stability. So it's going to be really interesting to have a play at the helm and see exactly how it feels when you're underway. But when you're at displacement speeds like this, of course, the tracking is everything you'd expect of a cat. Very relaxed, very stable, wherever you want to move about on board the boat. And of course, virtually no wake. And because those engines are spaced so widely on uh, these hulls, you get excellent manoeuvrability when you're back in the marina. So it's a very confidence-inspiring boat to handle. But actually, while we're at displacement speeds, we should take a little walk around this side deck because obviously one of the key features here is this big fender right around the outside it's an enormous thing and it's actually designed to be used as a place to plant your feet it's got a lovely fibrous pitted sort of surface very hard wearing that enables you to grip on that properly and that stay grippy when it's wet so it's actually a pretty broad walkway and you get this thick aluminium grab rail to make your way well, well, right around the uh, front to the bow. When you reach the bow, this elevated foredeck moulding obviously generates a good bit of space for the cabin, which spans the holes down below there. More Samson posts. And more evidence of the care and attention that's been paid to the simple seamanship practicalities here. I mean, everywhere you look, you see fender or guardrails. Just as at the back end, that kind of extended passerelle protects the engines from damage, so at the front end here, the fender wraps right around the front, and we have a heavy duty aluminium bar wrapping around the anchor too. And it makes a great grab handle as you're doing your business up on the bow. We also have a little LED strip here, a little searchlight, yeah, it's, it, it's good and it uh, obviously draws very little, but I, on a boat like this, kind of prefer the, the traditional circular um, headlights. I'm on my own there, the likes of Sargo and Targa seem to have replaced those with strips exactly like this, which in fairness look a little bit more modern, but my personal taste would be for something a bit more dramatic and theatrical. On the front of the uh, superstructure, we have this opening window which enables you as you're underway to provide plenty of ventilation for the skipper at the lower helm there who seems very happy with his day's work but of course it's only the first morning of the show it's not even nine o'clock so i'm sure we'll wipe the smile off his face over the next five or six days in accordance with the way ben likes to go cruising this uh, cabin has been freed from the constraints that are imposed by the breadth of slender cat holes by raising that four deck superstructure we've got a transverse double there are skylights and windows on both sides plus an aft facing window that opens out into the cockpit so even in the middle of the summer you get a decent through draft and stay fairly cool there's also a changing area here or just a place to sit down and relax and read a book with the reading light and while there's no real space in terms of cupboards and drawers what Ben's intending to do is provide a set of recycled sailcloth bags that hang down from these sections along both sides okay so we're out on the water now and uh, about to have a little drive but before we do that a quick note about the helm and as you would expect, it's relatively spacious on a cat because you've obviously got a lot of deck space to play with. But at the same time, you feel quite nicely contained. And you've got uh, some useful little uh, wings here for a bit of lateral movement, which having driven a few power cats before, you tend to, to need if you're sitting down. Because obviously when you heel into a corner rather than heel in, you tend to heel slightly out with twin hulls. 
Uh, but the visibility is fantastic. Obviously, we've got the open aft end and we've got wraparound glass, a kind of inverted warship style windscreen. And despite the fact that this is actually a, a lower flybridge than um, Espen's model, model number two, there's also plenty of headroom in the standing position. I'm a more or less six foot, I might be rounding up a touch there, but that's what you do, isn't it? Uh, I've got a good three inches above my head. There's no fore and half adjustability on the bench because, of course, we've got these uh, rigid aluminium bars behind this bench seat. But for a man of my size, it's a pretty comfortable position. Um, the dash itself, there's uh, plenty of space for additional gear should you want it. Um, but everything's relatively simplistic. Twin throttles to the right hand and a joystick control on the left. But what we really want to do with a cat, of course, particularly a foil equipped cat with a pair of XTOs on the transoms, is uh, to get up and run in and see how she behaves. So we'll do exactly that now and hopefully we'll enjoy what we find. So we'll just engage the gears and get her up. a very easy boat to drive and actually from this lower helm with these kind of compact wraparound proportions and a relatively modest beam it actually feels like you're driving a significantly smaller boat than 46 feet so here we are back at Cannes in the nick of time for the start of the show uh, and that's the Vandal Explorer there's Espen's Vandal Explorer next door. On the face of it, of course, there's a catamaran, not just a catamaran, but an aluminium catamaran with outboards and foils and a flybridge. It's not what you could call the mainstream choice, but with all that deck space, with that very stable and user-friendly driving experience, with that running efficiency, with that quality build, 
that lightness of build, that flexibility, that custom friendliness of build. I think this boat and this brand are going to get a lot of attention here at Cannes and well beyond. Thank you.